Hey guys, what's up? It's Sarah Jane. Um, so I wasn't going to do this anymore. Uh, as you guys know, I really love movies. I absolutely adore them. Um, and I wasn't going to review anymore because the unedited, rough view of it is um, a little boring. I've noticed a lot of people don't actually watch it all the way through. However, the movie that I'm going to talk to you about needs to be talked about. Um, so that movie is Bohemian Rhapsody. I am a massive fan of Queen. Uh, I actually didn't really realize it until I watched this movie. Um, my, my whole childhood my dad would always play Queen and um, Black Sabbath and all of those kinds of bands and musicians when I was a kid and I never really thought about it. I never really thought, you know, oh this is classic rock, this is great, you know, I, I knew I liked rock and I knew I liked classic rock, but I didn't realize how many of those songs that I really liked were actually Queen. Um, so when I went and watched this movie, and I knew almost every single song, I was like, wow, this is like what I grew up on. How did I not know all of these were Queen? I even sang a few um, when I was in choir at my high school. So how did I not know this? Um, and it just, it. I guess it's only because it, it was second nature. I never really paid attention to the band names. I just listened to the music and felt the music. And after watching this movie, I realized how hard of a Queen fan I am. So <laughs> I I can't help but talk to you guys about it. Um there are reviews online for like Rotten Tomatoes where it only gave it like a 60%. Um and then the audience rating was like in the 90s. So the audience is right, in my opinion. Um, I don't know who critiques these movies. I went and saw Overlord with Tony. Tony really liked that movie. Um, being a media studies major and learning about different shots and the way you feel things, I kind of felt like... <sighs> I'm trying to put it in a nice way, but it, it just, it was too much all at once for Overlord. It, there was too many shots going on, and the shots that were kind of like still or tracking shots, just there were explosions everywhere, as well as zombies, and it just, it was too overwhelming, and I don't feel like they gave you enough of a break in between those shots and in between those scenes to be able to um, process the movie and itself until everything is resolved and it's the end of the movie. So, um, that movie got like a 97 on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and I, I don't know why, but the audience score was like 60. So that just goes to show, um, there are certain films out there and certain critics that have a different way of processing it or looking at it, I feel like they're just filling out a criteria instead of genuinely watching the movie. Um, so with Queen, or Bohemian Rhapsody, um, the movie I really liked. I think um, Rami Malek really represented the character well. Um, they gave him... Um, an actual mouthpiece like with his with Freddy's teeth to make him more prominent and sticking out uh and it worked the only thing that he had that wasn't Freddy was um he he had his natural blue eyes in it instead of his brown eyes um I feel like either he had issues with the contacts which he was Benjamin in um the last Twilight movie, Breaking Dawn, and he wore contacts there, and he was my favorite character throughout that film. Um, 
just because he had such unique power, he controlled all the elements, and he was one of those bad boys who didn't give a crap. Like, he, he gave a crap about everyone else, but he didn't care what anyone else thought of him, and he stayed true to himself, which is kind of what Freddy does, so in a way, I could easily see him in both roles. Um, but he was wearing contacts for that, so I don't know if maybe he developed an issue with them, or... Um, if they just decide to stay his true color, uh, they changed everything else about him. And the important thing is he captured the essence of Freddy, not necessarily became exactly Freddy, you know. So as far as that, um, I also feel it might have been a stylistic choice because baby blue eyes sell more than brown eyes, um, even though I know... I have brown eyes, and a lot of people have brown eyes, and they're beautiful, but I feel like blue eyes are a little more compelling, at least for the story and the way that they shot these images. Um, there's one shot in the movie during the Live Aid concert, which becomes their acceleration point at the end, where the audience is reflected back in his eyes, and I don't feel they could have done that if he was wearing contacts. Uh, they, we definitely could have seen the contacts, and especially we probably couldn't have seen the audience as much as we could have there, um, because the background, like, the sky was blue, so I feel it was a good choice for them to just stay true to his eye color, because the contacts would have been just as distracting as the teeth. Um, yeah. But, so there are things in this movie, and a lot of critics have talked about this. Um, there are things in this movie that aren't as true to the story as they could be. Um, uh, for example, he performs Live Aid in 1985, and... Um, in 1987, he's diagnosed with AIDS. In the film, he's diagnosed with AIDS and he tells all his bandmates and stuff right before Live Aid. Uh, that's not how it happened. Um, he, he also broke up with Paul Prancer before Live Aid, um, which also didn't happen. Paul Prancer was with him for at least a couple years, a year or two after Live Aid. Um, so he was still there for a while. After Live Aid, but I feel like they made these decisions um, because they needed an acceleration point, and Live Aid was a really good conduit for that since performing at Live Aid in Wembley Stadium was one of the biggest concerts that we've ever seen. Um, so I really liked it. I really liked that they did stay true to Queen. Yes, there were some things that were off date-wise and such. <laughs> um, in the beginning, so, Freddie Mercury met, um, in, in the film, Freddie Mercury met the band Smile um, the same night that they lost Tim, who was their lead singer, um, and Freddie jumped right in. That's not how it happened in real life. In real life, um, Freddie and Tim were actually good friends, uh, and he was introduced to the band, so he knew Brian and Roger, and they had known each other for a while before Tim left, and once Tim left, he was kind of set up to take over the band. So, um, that was kind of an inaccurate moment. There are a couple of those as the movie goes along. Um, and if you're interested in, uh, finding any of those, there's a few people on line, especially on YouTube, that show some really good information about it. Um, uh, I might leave a description in the link below or in the information tab, um, just about some of those. Uh, YouTubers and some of those facts, but I, even though there were some inaccuracies with it, 
Um, it still had the essence of what Queen was. And Brian and Roger, um, Brian was the guitar, lead guitarist. Roger was the drummer. Um, and Deakey or Deacon, his last name was, um, John was his first name, is the bass player. Freddie Mercury's the lead singer, obviously. Um, they, uh, Brian and Roger were a part of um, being producers for Queen. So we didn't get some of the very awkward and rough uh, moments with Queen where um, they had some hiccups along the way. Uh, and when the band broke up, um, it, they kind of blamed it all on Freddie in this film, but the real thing that happened was Roger actually got the, the album deal first, followed by Brian had a mini album. I think Deke, uh, John Deacon had um, some kind of album going on, and then um, Freddie had his two albums that he was supposed to come out with. That's when he made Barce Barcelona. Um, and I think he was in the ballet at that time where he couldn't dance, so they just carried him across the stage. Um, but I've, I've been doing a lot of research. I've seen a couple documentaries the past couple weeks. Um, yeah. Oh, did I mention that I just got back from seeing it for the fifth time? Um, like I said, guys, I really like this film. I hope you guys do too. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen it. Let me know if you like it. Um, and so the reason I've been able to see it five times, um, this is totally not funded. The cup was not funded, but AMC has an A-list membership where you pay $19.95 a month, so 20 bucks a month, and you get three free movies a week. So um, that's the week starts, I believe, Friday and goes until that until Thursday of the next week. So since movies come out on Thursdays and Fridays, that's when they come um, roll over. Unfortunately, if you don't see all three movies in that one week, they don't roll over to the next week. You just have those three slots available if you want to. Um, I've kind of been more focused on pursuing schooling right now and finishing my finals. I just uh, left my last job. So I have a little bit of extra time here and there. Um, and I've been using that time to go see these movies and um, satisfy some of those relaxing times that I've been depriving myself up of this past semester. I had two jobs and I have 15 credits right now um, with two production classes. So this semester has been kind of hard as far as that goes, but the movies really help. And if you ever find the time to do it and you have $20 more a month, even just getting getting the membership and going and seeing a movie every other week, that pays for itself. Because most movie tickets um, during prime time are like $10. So two movies in two, in like two movies in a month ends up being uh, about 20 bucks. So it makes your, it makes your money up. Like even if you go once a week, um, if there's a date night or something and you have a significant other, um, it makes the money gets made up. You cannot share it with other people. It is an individual membership and you have to have your ID to prove that it's you that's buying it. But, um, I totally understand why they're doing that. Actually, Saturday, tomorrow, Tony and I are going to go to um, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald at an IMAX theater in Rockford. Um, and those tickets are normally $16. We're using our A-list, so we're getting it for free 
minus, you know, the $20 a month. But I just went and saw a movie tonight and I we normally go out on Wednesdays too. So it really, you really make up your money, guys, especially if you use it. Um, so I suggest looking into it if you can. Once again, it is not sponsored. I just find it to be the best way to look at movies if you really like going to see movies. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I really like this movie. Um, let me know if you do too. <sighs> I could talk about it forever. I really could. Um, but I'm, I'm not gonna... Just watch the movie. I'll let it speak for itself. Watch the movie. Um, there's a lot of documentaries, even on YouTube for free, that you can watch that are really good. Um, and even looking at interviews with, uh, with Rami Malek, just on any any show. There's a lot of uh, compilations on YouTube right now, and he is a hilarious guy. Um, he really enjoyed doing this this role and performing it. He was Mr. Robot. Um, he, he was on Mr. Robot, and they really liked him from that, so that's how they found him, which it's a completely opposite role of what it was that he was doing, but it, it worked out. Um, and he has the jawline of Freddie Mercury, too, so it really... <sighs> okay. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.